tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed, and a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to tinfoil hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am, you know I'm here to do, I'm here to rock. Joining me as always, Xavier Guerrero, and on the ones to Juicy Johnny, Jay Nice, Johnny Woodard. How are you guys? Hey, I'm great. Hey, Sam. we're in it, dude. We're in it to win it. it. We got, we got investigative reporter, podcaster, YouTuber Andrew Gold from the YouTube channel The Edge. On the edge with Andrew Gold. Uh, check it out. Very one thing. One fun. thing I want to say before we start: stay to the end of this episode. You you got to stay to the end of this one. It gets crazy. Oh yeah, he drops the bomb about something that's just insane, <laughs> and I we have to. He brought it up, and we're gonna have to do a whole episode on it. It's so nuts to me. I'll fight everybody. That's all <laughs> you need to know about that yeah. one. I'll fight everybody, dude. You think I'm afraid? I'll fight. Okay, but real quick before we get into the show, uh, I want to thank everybody who's been donating to the uh, Chaos Twins Indiegogo. We are over, I believe, thirteen thousand right now, or wow. right there. Uh, I right mean, under my, it. Right oh, yeah, under we're twelve thousand six hundred right now. Uh, thank you guys so much. We're we're not even halfway through, and it's we know it's going to keep getting better and better. And listen, I am so excited about this project. And if we keep it going, we're going to get those damn animations going. So even if you just give a dollar, it just means so much to me. And I, you know, I, I'm so blessed. I love the swarm. I love you, and I'm thankful. And I, I mean, I'm so excited about this project. It's the first time I've done a family friendly project. And uh, so uh, just go to chaostwins.com or samtriplee.com. Click the uh, link and you go to Xavier. I got a question. Yeah. What is this um, that I'm very excited for? Tinfoil hat trap mixtape? Dude, we have it. We have a mixtape. <laughs> Once that we hit 15,000, we'll drop the uh, the mixtape. We got oh, a mixtape the... going. We got <laughs> I'm it, dude. So excited. I'm telling you. <laughs> this whole thing. Paranoid American is fire, dude. That guy knows exactly what he's doing. He's put yeah. this whole campaign together. I'm so blessed to be working with him. And I'm so blessed that you guys are supporting us. So thank you guys so much. And real quick before we get to Andrew, check go to samtribly.com. Check out my dates. Uh this weekend, uh tomorrow night or tonight, depending on when this goes out. Austin, Texas. There's still some tickets left, but that will sell out. Grab your tickets. Dallas, get ready for fire, bro. The whole team's coming. We're excited about being there. Uh, uh, Eddie Bravo, Xavier Guerrero, myself will be live at the House of Comedy in Plano, Texas. It's in Plano, Texas, so go check that out. Then I just added on the 24th, I am doing a very special show. It's the Revival Live at the Rabbit Hole. It's actually called Room 3. Two, three, four, I believe it's called. Uh, you can click the links right there. That's a revival where I do an hour of comedy, political talk, spiritual talk, religion, and conspiracies. Just one hour of fire. I'm going to start doing those once a, a, a month and put it out for uh, as premium content. So come check it out. I'd love to have you guys. And then El Monte, we just added it. Myself, Xavier Guerrero, will be El, El Monte at the Post Comedy Show. Grab your tickets now. Anything else, guys? Nope. Check out the new That's Broken it. Sim. We, had a, great, we oh, yeah. had a great Broken Sim this week. It's a funny, funny episode. All right, guys. Oh. Enjoy this episode about uh, exorcisms, pedophilia, and cults with Andrew Gold. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, I'm very excited to have this next guest on. He's uh, got some incredible topics to talk about, and it's one of my... Well, I'm just excited to mix it up. Uh, he's got a podcast called On the Edge. Please welcome Andrew Gold. How are you, Andrew? 
Good, good. Thanks for having me, guys. What an exciting moment. Well, well, we appreciate well, anybody who comes on the show and slums with us. So thank you very much. A lot of people, when they see the name Tim Fall Hat, they're like, nope, can't do it. I'm like, well, we got a very passionate <laughs> crowd. And uh, if you want to if you want to reach a very, very supportive crowd, uh, this is a show to do. So I'm so thankful you would come on our show. It really means a lot to us. For our listeners who may not be familiar with you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where where they can find you, and a little bit about your podcast? Sure, sure. I'm a British documentary maker initially. I then became a sort of YouTuber, funny word I never thought I'd be, but that's how hey, we're all doing those kinds of things, aren't we? And a podcaster. And my podcast, On the Edge with Andrew Gold, I speak to uh, lots of weird, strange, controversial people, both politically, but also uh, people who've done weird, strange, th I don't know, it's like one of the guys who got caught in the Andes mountain and, and had to eat his friends and uh, all sorts of what? extreme people. That's a you know. person? Yeah, well, there was one of the, they, they were the people, I don't know how, I haven't thought about him in like a year and a half or something, but they were this Uruguayan rugby team and they, they were oh, flying yeah. over to Chile and as they were crossing over from Argentina over to Chile, I'm in Argentina now as it happens, and uh, they, they crashed in the Andes and they were there for three months and there was no food or water. You can't drink snow because you've got a, the snow, you've, and they'd never been in the snow because they're from like hot countries. They're in like shorts and sandals <laughs> in the blizzards in the, in the mountains. And to melt the water from the snow, because the snow will give you like frostbite in your mouth if you drink it. So they had these wine bottles and they'd have the sun in the snowy sky sort of melting one drop a day. And then they had to start eating each other. And that, that's my introduction to the show, basically. So hello, everyone. That's, well, why, that's not what I do, but yeah. Now, real quick. <laughs> that, what, now, yeah. were the friends already dead or did they Rochambeau who they're going to take <laughs> out? <laughs> they were they were dead. So a lot of them died when the when the plane impacted, yeah. including the yeah. pilots. It yeah. sort of went down, nosedived into the you know it broke in half basically on top of a mountain peak, and half of the airplane fell back, and it went down into the snow and submerged everyone in the back, and they all just suffocated immediately. Um, and then the front part, the pilot got squashed, and a few people, and everyone got thrown to the front. All the seats came out and went to the front. Loads of people died. A lot of people broke legs and things, which was worse because they very gradually died from because when you get a broken leg like you know you play sports it's nothing you go to the doctor oh, right. whatever there that's the end of your life so yeah th those people were like well <laughs> i don't have long for this world you guys who wants to have me when i'm gone and they sort of told each other sort of religious stories about it like oh this is the body of the christ kind of thing and it helped them to get through it and they ate one another and uh no one came and got them eventually two guys like wearing like socks uh had to trek for miles and miles and miles in the snow and oh. came across like some farmer in the middle of like Chile, who himself was nine hours drive from the nearest town. So this this Chilean farmer was like, oh shit, I better like, okay, you wait there and like drove nine hours and got like the world's press and came back and saved these, the helicopters came oh and saved the, the people. Oh yeah. my, so if we had the power rank on this show, who we're gonna eat, I think first is XG, he's the youngest, right? Yeah. So it's the freshest. I'm I'm last because I'm oldest and fattest. I you're, the honest, Sam, you're the you're the meatiest. Yeah, you're you the tastiest. The, you no, the I'm the fat. Too. You're eating nothing but fat, man. Tasty. Fat is tasty. It's good. Mm. You're not. You're gonna get lean. Barely anything off of me. Just let me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want that lean. Just stuff, root. Man. It's just root. Uh, okay, but we'll debate that. Maybe <laughs> actually, maybe we should just make a uh, an alliance and take out Johnny. He's got <laughs> like a little that. bit of both. No, I'll but be, we I'll need be Johnny. Gone. I'll run. John Johnny builds the fires. Let's be for real. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's a good well. point. Survival situations, you guys, <laughs> you guys are. You guys Anyways, okay, die. so I'm definitely not going first. But uh, so your podcast is, uh, where can they find it? Everywhere? Yeah, just, I mean, it's it's got a YouTube as well. Some I do everything. Sometimes I'll talk about like the Royals, stuff I never thought I would. But on YouTube, the algorithm made that, like Meghan Markle became a big thing. I didn't know she was. Now I know fucking everything about right. Meghan Markle and Tom Cruise and all the celebrity stuff. But then also I do a lot of stuff, yeah, cults, people who have left cults. So again, Scientology, but Islam, Hasidic Judaism, stuff like that. It's on all the audio places, on the edge with Andrew Gold, and then on YouTube, just type my name. But there's a singer with my name, and he's dead, and he's not me. <laughs> now, did he die? In, uh, when did he die? Did, was he able to get all the like social media handles? That's the worst. 
Um, he, he, yeah, he stood. That's there, but even though he, I think he died before that was really getting going, but I can't get that. And he's on the front page of Google because he worked with the Beatles and stuff like that. So he, 10 CC as well, another band he worked with. So he was quite a big deal. Um, he died young. He was 51, and I remember picking up the paper, and it's, it was Amer he's American as well. And this Andrew Gold dies was in the new, which you don't often get to read about yourself. So it was exciting yeah. but scary. Well, thank you yeah. for calling 51 young. I appreciate that. Um, so <laughs> to die, uh, I, I yes, okay. Um, <laughs> I I uh, I had a real debate on one of my other shows with somebody that is a good friend of mine. We have a. We have a show called Conspiracy Social Club, a.k.a. Deep Waters, and uh, we were debating the Bank of England, the Royals, their connection to Nazis. Um, what are your what are, as someone who's British, you know, what is your thoughts on the Royals and the presentation of the Royals, which is glamorous, but also really no power? Uh, do you think all of that is real? Not not necessarily that they're not glamorous, but like there's a do you believe there might be a, a darker side to them that that the mm. average person may not know? Yeah, well, I th I think you know people know now about Andrew, right, Prince Andrew, uh, and the Epstein stuff. And the thing is, there's there's another side as well. It's like so a lot of people are saying, oh no, there's no proof, there's no evidence, and there sort of is, but okay. But even if that's true. He is a guy who's got like 200 teddy bears that he keeps on his bed and he yeah. snaps at all the cleaners if anybody like takes one of them and puts them in the wrong position. He like goes mad at them. So for a start, even without going conspiratorial, it's like there's something like fucked up about those guys. They're, 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 they're a weird family. They're just, they're just strange. Um, the other thing is, again, without having to go conspiratorial, they clearly have a huge amount of power just from their image, as you say. So every time some sort of villainous psychopath wants to get away with something, the first thing they'll do is befriend the royal family. So the biggest example of that in the UK was Jimmy Savile, who was the psychopathic pedophile who, um, you know, did the worst things imaginable with, with dead people, everything. Like, it was the worst thing ever. And he was like besties with all of the royal family. So I don't know too much about all the conspiratorial stuff, and I'm sure there's a lot of truth in it. It goes back years. There's that weird German side. There's all these different links that I don't venture into so much, but there's definitely a danger. There's also good sides to it, but there's a danger in having this unelected sovereignty who don't have any power, but they do have sort of soft power, and everyone sort of cozies up to them. So that, that's my concern. With it them. is very interesting, like the kind of power they have, because they show up everywhere, you know, I mean, you're like, okay, they have no power, you know, but then, you know, Britain or England or the UK spends like a gazillions of dollars on weddings. It just, to me, it's like the presentation versus what could really be going on is uh super interesting. And again, we got into the argument with the bank of England. I don't know. Um, Jimmy Carr was on. Uh, Joe Rogan recently, and he was talking about how he he felt like the 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 British Empire didn't die, just rebranded itself, which we've talked about on the show a ton of times. Into the Bank of England, the you know the city of London. Uh, how are you in London? Are you near London? Are you like where 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 in England are you? I'm well. I'm, I'm right now. I'm in Buenos Aires because my oh, in-laws oh, okay. live here. I used to live in Argentina, so I spent like 15 years around South America in my 20s and early 30s. So I'm back in Argentina for a few weeks um, in an Airbnb. But I live in a city a few hours away from London, and I never say where because all the cults that I talk to are fucking Respect. mad. Yeah, and they. I get like emails all the time like you're supposed i'm supposed to show up in court like everywhere like every day someone is expecting me in court somewhere but as long as they don't have my address and can't like serve me so no my respect. agent is getting all these letters and emails going can you give me andrew gold's e uh, address because we need to take him to court and all this stuff and I'm, we're just i'm just not doing it wow dude well we were we were we were um contacted legally uh, because we had made some, uh, we, we had discussed what we, what we might, what I might do if I see this person in, in, in public yeah. mm. and, um, who was it? Uh, well, I don't want to get into it because <laughs> we had to, we had to edit down a lot of the stuff, but which yeah. was interesting. Cause we were, we were talking about how this, this particular person was a part of a, 
uh, a very nasty pedophile cult. And uh, we got we didn't get called out on that. We got called out on that we threatened the violence against this person, which is super interesting and really weird that like a dick joke comic like myself is like getting served like legal papers. But you're saying yeah. you get served it all the time. Yeah, it, there's there's one cult in particular who I won't name, and uh, it got to such a point where I said to them, look, you know what, I'm prepared to call a truce here. I'm not going to take down the video about you because I interviewed the cult member's mum who's lost their kids to the cult, oh. um, and she's just gutted. They've taken yeah, for all sure. her money, all this stuff. It was just a horrible, horrible thing. And so on, we had this sort of, okay, I said, look, if you leave me alone, stop sending me really aggressive, angry, horrible emails about your Jewish this and we're going to get you and or, and we're taking you to court and all this stuff, then I will stop, you know, saying things about them and we were okay. By complete coincidence, a week later, the Daily Mail ran like a, a feature about my channel and I, they called me to ask me about it and I didn't mention this cult. All I said was there's one cult I can't talk about. By complete coincidence, they ran with the picture of this one cult. Oh, so it looked like man. It was all there. It's they've, gone ban- they've gone bananas, man. They've gone completely bananas okay. with me. They're, they're going mad at the mum. The mum's calling me saying, can you take this down? I'm like, I'm not taking it down still. And eventually I was like, what do you guys want from me? I, I can tell the Daily Mail, can you change the photo? And they were saying, we want you to make an apology on air. We want you to do this. It's like, all right, I'm just blocking all these people and I'm just never going to talk to them again it's so crazy dude how powerful podcasts have gotten so you 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 get into the weird you get into the unusual we you said some stuff uh exorcisms let's get into exorcisms uh Hmm. i've been on a spiritual journey myself i don't know where you are religiously or spiritually um, I'm an I'm an atheist like myself, but I'm open. You know, half of my viewers are, are religious believers in things, and I respect that. You know, good good for them. So even in your journeys that you've done on exorcism and all that stuff, you still don't. You just believe this is everything is just random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so sometimes that keeps me up at night because I just think about dying, you know, and it's not, it just, and people sometimes say, hey, what's the problem with dying? It's just like before you were born, you know, just be after. And I think like that's that. no. awful. Yeah, awful. Yeah. Awful. Yeah. I love being alive. Yeah. Um, so I try to sort of worship the human mind. I think the mind is just the most amazing things. And if you're looking into cult dynamics and things like that, you can see how somebody will believe they've been exercised. It so happened the exorcist that I was, I was hanging out with this guy and doing exorcisms with him, which, which I thought was going to be really fun but it turned out it was actually horrible to watch because you're watching like a 17 year old yeah they're like screaming on the floor they've been trying to kill themselves and stuff like this they've got all the cuts on them and i'm like fuck me yeah it's not good um (laughs) but this this exorcist was taking advantage obviously you know of these young girls and it turned out he was having a sort of romantic relationship with one of them who was over 18 but yeah so it didn't help me believe manipulation for sure so 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 when you go, so is that the only exorcism you've gone on? Yeah, well, it's the only exorcist I've done. But we did three or four exorcisms. You know, me and him. What well, it was him to be. I'm I'm giving myself some credit here. He was doing the exorcism, and I was his <laughs> assistant. I was like taking like the water to spritz on on the girl and uh, ringing a bell that wards off the devil, and it was, you know stuff like that. Oh, wow. So when you did that, did any of it resonate with you in any way? Like that, oh, there might be something to this or it just it, it just became this is all BS to you? No, we, yeah, it did resonate with me a little bit. And a part of it is because this was a documentary for the BBC. It's one of those ones where like, I'm on screen and you can see me getting involved. You know, I guess an American equivalent, maybe Michael Moore does that, but he's more political. I'm not very political. But so... For me, there's nothing more boring than me going in as a skeptic and then, oh, right, well, I was right. It's all bullshit. That's a really boring thing for me. So I needed a different angle and I wanted to be interested and open because we thought like if I do see something supernatural, I don't believe I will. But if I do, it's going to be the best film of all time because it'll be the first time ever the supernatural has been proved with HD amazing cameras and like everything. per You know, fine. I, I didn't see anything like that. But what was amazing is that the okay, there were three women who were really struggling with mental health issues and all three of them after their exorcism felt a lot better. And that was just to me really? fascinating on its own. Yeah. So you, would you say none of them have like, because my uncles, you people in Mexico tell you these stories of people that have been, that have had it and they talk about them having super strength and talking Latin and you've seen it on the movies. That was, that didn't happen at all. Didn't you hear none of that? 
No, no. And it's big in Mexico as well. Where I was was Argentina. It's typically a Catholic tradition, exorcism. It's, it's you know, it was bigger 2000 years ago. And it was still big, I think, in like the 1600s. And then in the 1900s, it just like died as a thing. Like nobody, people didn't even know what it was uh, until 1971. You mean exorcisms? Yeah, no, until 1971, a lot of people didn't didn't have an, any clue what an exorcist or an exorcism was. And then the film, the book came out in 1971. Three years later, the movie came out and suddenly exorcism around the world went mad and everyone was doing exorcisms. Oh, interesting. No coincidence, too, that it declined as m the mental health field evolved, I would assume. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I absolutely right. And and where I was in Argentina, it was a place uh, where they didn't have so much uh, mental health education going on. So people, mm -hmm. they went in with things that we would recognize as obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, schizophrenia, and several different disorders like that, where, you know, well, how do you explain that? Like, I yeah, get sleep yeah. paralysis. People used to think that was a demon on your leg. It's fucking scary, man. That's sleep oh, yeah. Paralysis, paralysis. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, go on. As, so you're atheist, and the reason I keep bringing this up because you start to investigate a lot of the 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 weird, the unusual, the supernatural. And wh what point of view do you try to come into it with? Mm, well, that's it—an open mind. I, I, again, I think there's nothing more boring than those kind of skeptical atheists who are like, "I'm an atheist, and I've got better knowledge than everybody else." Like, how the how the hell do you know what's going on in the universe? This ri ridiculously huge thing. Maybe we're in a simulation, and maybe God runs the simulation. What the hell do I know? A lot of people say to me, oh, you're an agnostic. And I just think agnostic is, a, is an unnecessary word because agnostic sort of implies, oh, I don't really know. Well, if that's true, then atheism means I do know and there's no God. And that, you can't know that. I think that's, that's a logical fallacy. So I think we don't need the word agnosticism. And I think atheism should mean, I don't really know. It's not something I think about too much. I don't really believe in it, but I'm, I'm open to new evidence and, and whatever. So, so if I'm looking into these things, uh, it was, it's always with an open mind. But, but I, I know I'm not going to see a girl levitating in front of me. I just know that. This guy yeah. told me that we would. He was like, oh, yeah, we see levitation. We see heads turn around. We see them go green and start vomiting. And it's like, well, that's never been documented ever, except for in really grainy film. I, I would love that it were true, because that would mean if, de if demons are real like that, then God and angels are also real. And then I'm not going to die in like 30 years. As it stands, I'm going to die in about 30 years. You're going to die in a bit less than that. And it's shit. <sighs> Oh man! <laughs> How do you know? I might go forever, dude. You don't know, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm working Musk. up, taking karate, dog. Live forever. Live forever. Okay, that's interesting. So you went out one exorcist exorcism. Have you interviewed other people about exorcisms? Uh, a fair amount. While I was making this documentary, I went and spoke to psychologists to ask what was going on. It tends to be adolescents who go to see the exorcists. There, there are loads of them in Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, as you say, lots of parts of Latin America, but you get them in America as well. You get them in Ireland, in the UK. Um, and it tends to be young people who go, particularly young women, uh, adolescents who I don't know if it's like fashionable to say nowadays, but you know, psychiatrists were saying to me, young women in particular are really, uh, open to that kind of manipulation when they're teenagers. They're going through a lot of shit. It's a really tough age. Um, they, they've, the, some of the people who went for the exorcisms, they were suffering with some of the social social contagion, mental illnesses, things like oh, anorexia gotcha. and bulimia, uh, and it's no good. And so they go and you've got, you know, all these people around you going, you're going to get better, but we're going to fight the demons with you. And it makes you feel like a million dollars. The thing was a year later when I went to see them Again, the patients, they were like back to square one, you know, because it's, it only cures you for a temporary amount of time. And there's a psychological grounding for this in something called primal scream, which is what Ooh. John Lennon and Yoko yeah. Ono were really into. That's why she felt like compelled to scream all over all of his songs for some reason. For like oh, 20 yeah. Years. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What was oh, that yeah. guy's name? Do you remember the therapist who pioneered that primal scream? Oh, I can't like remember. It was, just, it was this idea, right, that you had to, uh, the therapy was screaming out your problems basically you just get people in a room talk yeah. about their issues and it's like ah like that that there was some therapeutic exactly. value to screaming at the top it, of your lungs but. and it turned out it turned out it was complete nonsense and the guy Welcome. lost yeah, his rep bullshit. reputation yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. It, it was in the end but but it was, it was a nice idea and th there is some evidence to suggest that if you're doing all that screaming and you combine it with therapy as in analysis 
the, the main thing is you need to be able to reframe your issues in a certain way. So you, you need to be able to look back at everything that, that's happened with you and you reframe it in a positive light or whatever while doing that screaming stuff. There's some evidence to suggest that that can actually work. The problem with just the screaming on its own is you have this like really amazing dopamine rush and the adrenaline and everything. Like with an exorcism, you feel fantastic, you feel amazing, but it doesn't actually deal with any of the underlying issues. So a few weeks later, or it could even take months, a few months later, you're mm -hmm. back to square one. Now, so when you that, revisited them, yeah. had they mm -hmm. recontextualized their issues to be more mental health oriented, or were they still thinking they were possessed when you revisited they, them? It's a weird thing. There's some sort of cognitive dissonance going on because they were still talking in supernatural terms. So what they would say is, oh, Padre Manuel, who was the guy who, the exorcist, they were like, oh, he's a fraud, I've realized. Like one woman uh, went back yeah. so often, she kept wanting more. And eventually the priest was like, you're doing it wrong, obviously, so we don't want you here. So she was like banned <laughs> from the church because she wanted it so much, yeah. Yeah, which is sad, really. But then the other two were just like, oh, no, what well, one other one was like, no, you know, it's not working. The one who got rejected from coming back to the church, she found another exorcist who's willing to do like 10 exorcisms on her a week or something. She's just going to be exercised like every day because she's I wonder addicted if she to bought that rush. Bulk. She, like, <laughs> yeah, buy, I think she might. Uh, you know, buy 10, get 12. Are they paying for more. these things? So this is the trick. It's like it's more like a pay at the gift shop kind of on the exit, gift shop by the exit uh, kind of thing. So uh, it's like, oh, it's all free. Everything's free. It's all free. But then like you feel like they've just saved your life. So you have to give a donation. And then you get like shuffled out to this little shop. And there's a shop is like have a little thing of olive oil and like the little thing of olive, a little tiny jar. It's like the equivalent of $20, which for them in Argentina is like mad money. Um, and that, that olive oil is supposed to cure your breast cancer or ridiculous things oh. like that. Hey guys, let me tell you about our friends at Fume. Let me tell you about Fume. Cold turkey may be great on a sandwich, okay? But there are better ways to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor or some crazy spiritual mumbo jumbo from hot chicks on TikTok, okay? We're talking about our sponsor, Fume! And they, they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Okay, Fume is an innovative, award-winning device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is na completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and making replacing your bad habit easy. Your Fume comes in an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for your fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while you're breaking your habit, okay? I love it. I love it. it's well-weighted, perfectly balanced, extremely fun to fidget with. It's made of real wood and the shapes are insane. It feels cool using it. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard. But switching the fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of successful stories. And there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating hu humanity's breakup with destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today try fume.com and use code tinfoil to save 10 percent off when you get the journey pack today okay try fume fum.com and use the code tinfoil for additional 10 percent off your, your journey pack today enjoy so so you don't necessarily believe in like demons and angels and all that stuff, but do you believe in the occult? Hmm. Um, I believe that people practice the occult. I don't believe they can conjure evil like that. But again, I, I wish it were true because it would mean that you could conjure goodness. And again, no, I, I, I know I keep, I go on about it, but I don't want to die. So. Yeah, I get, I get it. Uh, but Respect, like yeah. when you when you look at these secret societies and stuff, and I don't know if your podcast has dove into that Alistair Crowley and all that stuff that mm -hmm. that they 
they believed in. And then you, you know, you start to like fast forward a decades or even a century forward and we have like 9-11 and all the numerology with that does that resonate with does that mean it's true or is that just a bunch of people trying to just do some theater weird shit on a global mm. level yeah i'm wary of being that boring guy but again i want to sort of reframe that as like isn't it amazing the human mind we've evolved over three hundred thousand years to be pattern seekers and to find patterns in everything and it's just amazing how our minds work but that alistair crowley stuff is fascinating and one of the people who's a big practicer of that and one of the origins of what was it was led to the origin of scientology so l ron hubbard the sci-fi writer was right. Big, big on black magic and all of those kinds of things. And he incorporated some of that into the very early teachings of Scientology, which then, you know, ruined families and bankrupted people and ruined lives around the world. Have so, you ever done any of your podcasts where you kind of got surprised? Like, wow, there's mm. some, there's something to this. Mm. Well, to be honest, not that many of my episodes are on uh, the supernatural. Um, not too much on that kind of or the paranormal i did do some like halloween episodes i do a few of those and i'm just happy to sit and listen there was a guy i had on about ghosts a year ago and like i said it's really important for me not to be that guy who's just going like oh no that's not real it's just like i haven't seen it but it sounds like the guy i'm talking to has and he believes he has so who the fuck am i to tell him like he hasn't seen what he's seen no you know? i got Good you i got you i find that interesting i find it very interesting the whole thing because as i move through this whole thing you're like this show started in i think 2015 i think it started and now it's like mm. we're we're all we're like eight years later almost and you know as i i move through i just start to like notice patterns and and just start to i always say conspiracy leads to spirituality which is interesting um mm. and then the dark the darkness here because like all these people that are out there they they this small group of people they they have certain beliefs and i don't know I, I, to that to me it says if there if there is darkness there, there i you know i totally believe in dual, duality and all that out there um that if there is darkness and there practice darkness, there must be light to that. I think the the universe has duality to it and all the light out there. So to me, the occult means there's got to be a good, a good sense out there. And the reason I want to get into that is like what pedophilia. I know you, you, you've done some shows on that and how, how, how like destructive and, and why so many of them do that. You know, you know, obviously this is a, this show's called Tim Fall Hat. We delve into the world of conspiracy and the notion that people conspire. And then there was this whole thing about Q. And I don't know if you ever felt what was going on with Q. Uh, this whole argument stuff. So I, I have I have lunch with a friend of mine uh, two weeks ago. And he's a normie. And we've been friends since high school. And he's, he's killing it out in L.A. And I couldn't be happier for him. And he starts to bring up to me about, um, you know, asking me if I believe this, this, and this. Oh, you do, he goes, yeah, oh, you don't believe in Q. And, well, I tell him my belief in what Q was, which was a, a beta test for AI. I think they wanted to see if they could use AI to get people to follow it. And I think on a large scale, that's what they did. This There's an old uh, thing called Operation Trust, which is something that they used before. Um and then he brought up Pizzagate. And so I go, well, he goes, you don't believe in Pizzagate, do you? And I go, well, I mean, do I believe that they were doing bad things to children in the basement? I'm fine if we don't want to believe that. I think they use that as a way to run most people off. But do I believe that there's a giant pedophile ring in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, it's it's called Jeffrey Epstein. And yeah. there it is. It's a giant blackmailing scheme run by Israeli intelligence to blackmail politicians to control them. So do I believe that 100% we have the documentation, all that stuff. So like, does that stuff resonate with you at all? Um, well, they're definitely ped pedophile rings. Um, there have been many that have been caught who are obviously religious based in particular in the UK, there were quite a few, uh, you know, I don't mean to just single them out, but there were some Muslim sort of backed ones. Um, 
I think, was it Rochdale in the north of England in particular, where they were caught? Um, obviously, look, when we're talking about conspiracies, we're more interested in the elites and the celebrities and those kinds of things. And I wonder if look, they say there's one percent of people are psychopaths in general. Psychopaths don't all do horrible things, but they just do what they want. You know, they feel like doing something. They want to do this to a kid. They want to uh, blackmail someone. They just do it. They're not sitting there like, ha ha, I need to get you. They're just like, I'm just going to do what I do and I don't care. Uh, and there's a theory that, okay, there's 1% in the general society, but among elite people, so CEOs, high up politicians, um, uh, celebrities, actors, and those kinds of things, that number's gonna be significantly higher, maybe 10% of them, 15% of them. So here we are. So if, I, if I, that's where I get most conspiratorial is I'm looking at these smiling celebrities all the time. Obviously a lot of them are really nice people. I'm sure I have no doubt about that, but a good portion of them, and we don't really know which ones, we all have our suspicions, right? Everybody on Twitter is saying, oh, Tom Hanks this and all that, right? We, I don't actually know. I don't know enough to really suggest that about Tom Hanks or whoever. He's always seemed really nice when I've watched him, but I know that enough of them will be that way unfortunately one percent of men are pedophiles as well again maybe that's higher in these elite circles where they're able to actually get access and get away with what they're doing and yeah epstein was one of the cases that i'll say to people because people say oh conspiracy theories are never true well that's one of the cases where unfortunately it was there are there are bad people out there he's one of them and a lot of people who were visiting his island were bad people as well and we didn't well we sort of knew about it for years we didn't entirely know jimmy savile was another one jimmy savile in the uk everybody knew but they didn't know. So that was a conspiracy theory, right? Because a lot of, it, for it to be a conspiracy, I suppose it can't just be one person acting solo. So he was one person. And okay, I don't know if the royal family knew what he was up to, but enough people did and they enabled it because they were getting rich off of him. So that's a conspiracy theory and that turned out to be true. So that's two uh, conspiracy theories at the top of my head and Epstein and, and Savile. And both of them are unfortunately about sexual abuse of children. So it's, it's unbelievable. Not, yeah, go on. Yeah, it is. That Andrew, and, uh, that that Jimmy Savile, like, like, I mean, you could not write a better looking character <laughs> that turned out to be exactly what you thought. I mean, like, don't judge a book by its cover, and that book is exactly what its cover says, and yeah. it's it's so crazy, and and it just gets to the point where people are like, how could somebody let that go? And then we find all the stuff that's going on. With the, uh, you know, with um, a Weinstein and everybody knew Weinstein was manipulating yeah. and you don't abusing. think the same thing. You don't think the same thing's going to happen with um, Dan Schneider. There's so many videos of Dan Schneider doing this, doing that. And we've all watched it and nothing seems to happen to him. You, th you don't think eventually we're going to be like, we saw it coming. We've seen Oh, you mean the so guy from um, Nickelodeon, the Dan yeah. Schneider Nickelodeon guy that yeah. got like Ariana Grande doing all this weird shit. And you're just like, yo, this is going somewhere it sounds like this part it sounds like in england but in america well you know yeah. th here's the biggest thing about pedophilia and it's not that uh it obviously exists but i think in the in in these worlds where there is a lot of power uh people want to control power they want they want to manipulate power and you know i mean that's exactly what Mossad was doing with the epstein stuff i mean R robert maxwell was very famous spy for israel and people talked about that all the time and you know and then his daughter the 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 one attractive daughter it's so hilarious how like he basically was like okay you two are ugly you guys are going in tech and you're the cute one with the big cans you're gonna be running the blackmailing scheme uh, it's really crazy. I can't, I, I, I'm, I am, it, I am blown away that they actually, that that family allowed Ghislaine Maxwell to go to mm. prison. Like I am blown away by that. Yeah, I would, I would be, the only thing is I think we need to be careful not to assume that's like, it's only some kinds of power. Cause I think it's all kinds of power. Whenever you get, and I've noticed this with pedophilia, if you ever get a closed group, it can just be scouts, the, the boy scouts, you know, some sort yes. of closed group where there's a hierarchy, like in a cult. And when there's a hierarchy, it means that people who are lower down are scared of outing the people above them. As soon as that happens, pedophilia happens it's it's mad you just count to like five, like count on you what it will happen immediately and unfortunately i i don't know enough about that the mossad stuff but i know i know about the catholic church i know about the some some of the mosques in the uk religion unfortunately sometimes 
when it's, and I'm not talking about people who are individuals who have religious beliefs, right? I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about at the top when there is a hierarchy and people are being protected. And as you say, power. And that is churches, mosques, synagogues, uh, Boy Scouts, uh, different uh, unreligious cults as well. Soccer teams, all the soccer teams. It happens to all the kids, schools, any community like that. And I think we need to talk about it more. It is happening everywhere. And nobody wants to talk about it because everyone's scared. Oh, if I talk about it, people are going to think I'm one or whatever. Nah, you got at the moment. There's something like one in seven kids gets abused or something like. It's fucking it's mad. So nuts, dude. And it's we're here so like nuts. arguing over like like I don't the culture wars and shit like that. Meanwhile, kids are being abused all the time, and every, no one's talking about it. It is crazy. It is absolutely nuts, and I feel like we're we're waking up to it right now and. You know, whether there there's an, uh, you know, I mean, like, like I have a buddy of mine. He was like uh, talking to 17 year olds on on Snapchat and he got canceled for it. And I'm like that. OK, you shouldn't be doing that. You're in your mid 30s, you know, mm. and he paid a price for it. And I, you know, he never hooked up with them, but he paid a price for even snapping with them. But when we look at like somebody like Jerry Seinfeld, who was like on the cover of People magazine with a high a high school senior who at the time was 17 and she had D cups and everyone's like, you know, she might be 17, but those titties aren't 17. That's literally what the country's whole reaction to that story. And he he still continues to to um you know, like he, nobody, nobody says anything about that, and it's just mm -hmm. like I, I guess people are waking up to it more and more. But the re the big resistance to to I think pedophile rings is that people are so afraid of that there that there's monsters around, and they're so afraid that it's you know again I I talk about my one my one show my buddy he you know. He's totally into like Nazis, bad, P Putin, bad, like acceptable monsters. And it's like something I say to him all the time. It's like, you're really into like Autobots versus Decepticons. Like you're either an Autobot or you're a Decepticon. You're like either a good guy or a bad guy and never sell the two meat. And in reality, like, we're there's a you don't like if you went on right now an app and uh, that told you where all the sex offenders were you would be uh, uh, blown away by how many are all around you nobody wants to to look at that nobody yeah, wants yep. to look at that well, they rather believe that this one guy bad and we can all focus on him and not be like well there's a lot of these guys around here and nobody's talking about it well, look, Leo DiCaprio gets away with it. Certain people with like a confidence just sort of do it, hide in plain sight. That's what Savile did. Um, and forget 17 years old, which is no good, by the way. But yeah. the Rolling Stones were with 13 year olds. Iggy Pop, 13 year old. He, he wrote a song about it. And OK, to an extent, different era. OK, but it was absolutely mad. And they're still bragging about it now. And it's, it's just because they've got totally so much agree. bravado. It's mad. It's just crazy to me. It's just crazy, like what people were like. Oh, oh, oh! You want to take my thirty-year-old daughter on the road with you, Iggy Pop? Yeah, that sounds like a great educational camp for my daughter. Like, uh, unbelievable! Like, hey, you, you want to hear a story about? I met one of these. I met a pedophile, right? I met loads of them because I was I was looking into them for a book that I might still be writing soon. And I was in Germany. I was living in Berlin at the time. And Germany has the world's only therapy for pedophiles that doesn't report them to authorities ever. And that's wow. a really awkward thing. Yeah, double-edged sword here. Because on the one hand, it means they are talking with these guys who might be going back onto the street afterwards to abuse children, right? On the other hand, they're not going to go and get therapy and potentially be helped and then not offend another child unless they go in anonymously. So this is mad thing. And I thought, well, I've got to investigate that because I love living on the wild side and just controversial themes and stuff. So the first I said to them, I went and met the, the clinic and I said, can you set me up with your patients? And they said, well, look, we can't give you their, we don't even know their email addresses. They won't even, but we can give them yours. 
which is a weird thing for me because now it's like yeah. all these pedophiles in Germany have got my email address <laughs> and they're all like talking about me. And I'm like, all right, fine. Get on some weird and... mailing list that way. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's mad. It's mad. And then I waited and I thought like after a few weeks, like, okay, this is never going to happen. This was, what a stupid investigation. Of course, they're not going to email me. But then one guy does and he's got like a sort of fake email address, you know, with all the numbers and digits and weird shit in the email. And he goes, uh, you know, hi, I've heard you're doing this thing, blah, blah, blah. I need to make sure I can trust you. You're not going to kill me and all this stuff. And I was like, no, no, no. And he pedophile. goes, I'm like, you're the pedophile. How am I going to kill you? Yeah. Well, yeah, but I'm <laughs> yeah, not his type. Yeah, but, you know. worried, that's great. Actually, he's worried about you. And you're like, no, you're the pedophile, dude. <laughs> well, because I'm not his type, though. He's not going to do anything to me. I'm too, enough, way too old no for him. Weird. Yeah. So um, he gives me this. He goes, I'm in Berlin just for this day. And I was like, oh, so he's like, I've got to see you now. If you want to see me, I'm here today. Gives me an address. I'm like, okay, see you there. I look up the address. It's too late. I'm like on my way. Or I'm on my, I had a bike at the time. I was riding my bike, right? The address is a public swimming pool. Fucking weird, right? I'm, I'm weirded out at this point. Why am I meeting him at a public swimming pool? I cycle down to this place. My heart's in my mouth because I've never met someone like, you know, and, and I know a lot of journalists sort of are desensitized to this stuff. I wasn't. I was like in bits, like going to meet this guy. Like heart's going funny. I couldn't hardly breathe. But I go to this pool and I walk him. I'm looking around like, where is he? And he's messaging me. I'm wearing like this and that, I, you know. And I look up and eventually it's like, okay, that's him, right? And we call him Max. That's the only name I have is Max. He, I don't know his real name. And he's wearing Speedos, you know, the little tight things, and his little T-shirt hanging over it. He's got chubby legs. He looks like you imagine, not quite like Jimmy Savile, but he looks like what you're imagining of these guys. Right, so right. I go over and I'm like, I'm like, Max. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I am Max because he's German. And he goes, uh, we started talking a bit. And then a little girl comes over. He's like, oh, I'm, you know, can I get, and he gives us some money and she goes to get some sweets. And I'm like, who's, who's the kid, Max? And he's like, oh, she, yeah, I'm babysitting her. And I was like, you what? are fucking not. You are not babysitting that girl. Two other girls come over. Turns out he's babysitting three girls. So I said, what the fuck is going on, man? What, what is going on here? And he goes, I met this, this woman. She's their mum. She knows about me, right? And she, he's saying, I don't offend. I don't touch them. I just have the thoughts. That's what he's saying. He's a non-offender, right? And he goes, she knows about me and she trusts me. And so she's let me babysit them. So I thought he was lying because he was just trying to get away with it. I ended up meeting the mum because I was like, I, hang on, well, I've got to meet the mum. And he's like, no, no. I was like, I'm meeting the mum because I need to, if she knows, then what's the problem? So eventually I go around to the mum's house and she's like this super left wing, you know, and I'm not having to go at left wing people, but sometimes when it's too far one way or the other, no, she's I'm like super you. left wing. Yeah. And she's going like, um, you know, she does all these, these therapy classes for various minorities, which is fine, but she thinks that they're a minority, non-offending pedophiles and i do understand some of that i understand that like look if, as long as they don't offend like fuck it whatever but you're not about to give your kids to the yeah, guy I, that's to take that's to just swimming pool. chaos yeah. that's just so, chaos no i'm with you on man. that and you brought up a, a very interesting point listen i i despise pedophiles i despise them i like because you know the, i i was near one as a child oh um, i'm sorry yeah, I mean, like, it's. I don't want to get into the details of it, but, you know, there, it, it, you're hurting somebody's, uh, you're, you're messing with their future. I mean, and you're preying on somebody that doesn't have the mental capabilities to understand what you're doing and what you're proposing. But, you know, this German program brings up something like, if, if you are somebody who is this and you want to reform yourself, where can you go? Yeah. 100%. And in America, you get put on a list. Why would you go to get therapy then? In, in the UK, same thing. Uh, if the doctor doesn't report you, the doctor gets fired. In America, UK, Australia, in Germany, these people. So what happens is they're downloading child sexual abuse material. That's, that's what you're supposed to call it because it's not child porn because porn implies there's like consent, you know, they're consent, consenting yeah, to be I in it, so. which they're not. So it's child sexual abuse material and they're downloading it. They're using... Uh, and I'm not, I don't want to give anyone tips here, but you know, if, if anyone who oh. would get tips from this, they already fucking know. Do you know what I mean? If they're that way inclined, they already know. They're using like Napster and LimeWire. Do you remember those ones in the mm -hmm. 90s? We were oh, all using them to download still music. Around? Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. for that, man. It's a really oh. sad indictment of our past. It's like this thing we loved and we used to download like Britney Spears, Eminem mashups is now being used for that. And they're downloading these fucking images. But what will happen is every now and then, instead of it being the porn they or the whatever it is they think it is, it will actually be a thing saying, don't offend you. We're going to, we can help you call this number. 
And I think that's, I, I know it's controversial. I think that's brilliant because it appeals to their shame. And then they go in and they talk. And the clinic says, basically, we can, we can't really help with the psychopaths who are also pedophiles because they're just going to do what they do. We can try, right. but they're going to do it anyway, right? We don't really help with the ones who say who are never going to offend because they're just never going to offend anyway. We don't have to worry about them. They've got the attraction, but they're not going to offend. Okay, it's the ones in the middle who might, if they've had a drink, if they're in a vulnerable moment, they give in to their desires, they might offend. Those are the ones that the therapy is like, we got to get this person in here now before, because if they even touch one kid, that fucks up that kid's life. So they do immediately. And that's what they do. And I, I think that's actually, a, you know, if the alternative is just do nothing, people always say to me, oh, yeah, well, I would just kill them all. And it's like, great, go and kill them all. Go and do that. See how easy that is to do, because yeah. you can't. What's the next best thing? Let's do something we can actually do, which is try and persuade these guys not to touch our children. What's your yeah. what's your idea of what what how what proportion of pedophiles would you say fall into that group versus like mm. psychopaths and and the rest? From what I, I think it's impossible to actually know because it's so hard to collect that kind of data. What the therapist at the clinic said is that most of them never offend, and they even go as far as to say, and I don't know how much this is just sort of rhetoric that they give me, but they say that most offenders are not pedophiles; they are psychopaths. So, so here's an example. Huh. Did you guys know about Madeleine McCann? Yes. She was the, the British girl who yeah, the one was abducted. Disappearing and, with her family. Yeah. And that, the that's a crazy weird story. Oh, yeah, it's mad. And there's all sorts of conspiracies around it. At the end of the day, none of us know. But some people say the parents did something. I, to me, the most likely thing is that one of these guys took her, which is incredibly sad. Um, and, and it's believed to be at the moment a guy called Christian Bruckner, who is a German guy who's in prison at the moment. And he's in prison for raping adult women right now. So I had this whole list of pedophiles I was talking to. As they knew I was a journalist. I was honest with them from the start. But I had this list with after two years of like, and, and uh, there was a forum that I was in. Again, as a journalist, always said, I'm a journalist here, blah, 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 blah. And, and I told the clinic so they would know like, that's why I'm in, my name's in there, whatever. And I messaged one time because I heard there's a big story about Madeleine McCann and Christian Bruckner, the German, whatever. And I said, does anybody know this pedophile? Because I'd love to get a story. You know, again, I want to sell a, an article to the newspapers and stuff. I'm interested in this stuff. And I forgot about my message in the forum for a few days and came back to it. And it had blown up in the forum. They were the angriest I've ever seen them, all these pedophiles or pedophiles, um, really angry. And I was like, what are they angry about here? And the reason they were angry is because I had described this guy, Christian Bruckner, as a pedophile, and they describe him as a pedo criminal because they differentiate between somebody who has the inclination, which is these guys in the forum, and somebody who actually harmed a child. But more interestingly, this guy had a history of harming adult women. So the implication is he's not really attracted to kids or even adults. He's simply a psychopath who will take advantage of anyone he can. And a lot of the pedophiles are then pissed off because they're going, hang on, you're giving us a bad name. I mean, man, it goes so deep it's and it's so, so crazy. You're that giving whole, us a bad name. I mean, what a <laughs> hill to die on right there, right? I mean, like, <laughs> like what an insane, <sighs> like you're ruining our brand. That's what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't know what to do at that point because I'm like, I'm, I'm so, I'm in so deep now <laughs> with this whole thing. I, do, what, what is my book going to say? I'm, I was so confused by this point, and I think I'm just going to have to tell these stories and let people make up their own minds because it's an absolute mindfuck. The, the thing is though, look, one out of every hundred men it has this condition, the attraction at least, right? Well, in America, what, how many men are there? Well, 1.75 million or something. So what's 1% of that? 175,000 men? It's like the size of the army. There's an army mm. of them in America right now. There's an army of them in the UK. Every race, every religion, and particularly people in power, probably a higher percentage. So well, I, I, you know, what, where's, the where's, oh, yeah, here's the thing about all that. It's like, you know, there was a time when like uh, uh, an adult male marrying a 14-year-old was seen as the norm. And yeah. and. And what we've done over time, we realize that 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 psychologically is damaging and it's wrong. So we create these laws, right? There's yes. these laws which say you cannot do certain acts with people until they're this age because based on the, the negotiation basically between the parents 
and it's Mark Barron's old bit. The parents and the people who want to hook up with these people. What what is the age that we've accepted that we think people are old old enough to know what they're getting into? Okay, yeah. so we have we have this discussion of what's going on based on biologically. Somebody is ready to have children at a certain age. You could go well. That's an acceptable age to start having children. But we understand that psychologically, even though their bodies are ready, they aren't spiritually or mentally ready to engage in these acts. Now, with the Internet, we're seeing very high and just kind of the changing of how we raise our children that now we are seeing where I, I just go to the mall or wherever, and you start to see teenage girls dressed like strippers now, hmm. and you're like, what are we doing as a society? So <laughs> it's a very interesting uh, mm -hmm. quagmire. Is that the word? I'm uh, no, yeah. Maybe that's not the perfect word right well, there. What but... about the adults? What about to flip that on its head? So those are the kids who are dressed provocatively, and you're going, who is that for? You know, you're 13 years old. Who are you doing this for? Other 13-year-olds? Well, whoever your daughter is or son, you got to go, you explain to them, it's not just the 13 year old boys who are going to be looking at you, right? Yeah. So that's one thing. But if you flip that round, there's also this tendency towards adults dressing like children and being like applauded for it. And one particular one, I don't know if you know the singer, Sam Smith. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we've, we've yeah. talked about yeah. him. Yeah. 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 Fucking I mean Teletubbies all over his body. And like, who, who you just want to say to him, like, yeah, by all means, you have the individual liberty to dress, act, behave uh, however you want, as long as you're not impinging upon the freedom of another individual. Fine. I would, I would though ask you just for the, you know, in the sense of morality, <laughs> who are these for? Because it's certainly not for like the four of us. So who are these tattoos, these things of Teletubbies, who are they for? And that, I don't think that's an answer we really want to know. He's demented. No, I yeah. totally agree with you. And the way they're pushing, uh, like for me, man, you know, I started comedy in the early nineties, right? Like yeah. 90, I'd say like 93, right? which is it totally ages me right here. Right. But when I started <laughs> I doing full. stand up, I was always very, I was always raw, real. I would use, I didn't have any problems talking about what was going on in my, in my life, which was, I was a 20 year old in Las Vegas living the best life possible. And that included yeah. a lot of hooking up and all that stuff while everybody else was trying to be Jerry Seinfeld. Okay. So, so, I I got all the the perks of being dirty and I also got all the negatives. Like and I you know I consider that to be at the time it was kind of outlaw for what everybody else wanted to do. But now in this new kind of era and this new culture that's around we're allowing mainstream people to do outlaw shit in front yeah. of like young age people which I don't quite understand. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, and it's like, why are we doing this? Like there was a time where MTV, which is, I don't even know if it's around anymore. They're talking about like the ratings on MTV music video awards was like bottoming. I'm like, yeah, cause no one even knows that MTV is around. It's like, called ridiculousness. It's just all they play is it's, ridiculous. It's ridiculousness that MTV still putting on ridiculousness. <laughs> but the point of the matter is like, I remember being young and we were having this whole thing where like, the Christian right was like super ultra right. And they were like pushing this kind of view on people. And you would have people like Madonna being like, we're not going to play by that. And there's these people that have the right to be heard. And then like MTV just went full cultural Marxist. And it was like, they were putting on programs for children that you're going, is this appropriate? Like, mm -hmm. have we gone too far the other way? In, in a desire to push back on what, what we were sold as was like this group of people trying to infringe on our right to express ourselves, which I believe was a psyop at that point to make people so upset with church that they detach from God. But it's like, Sam Smith, you, you are on sh radio stations that play to children. Like, and you're incredibly out of shape. Why are yeah, you going dressed up like that in front of when you know children are in your audience well, pop like, music has always been for kids i mean it's always been for teenagers yeah teenagers but the have question been is like funny. like well I, and again i get it i'm older but like if you look at anybody any pop stars 
from the 90s, from the early 2000s versus what is being done in pop now to children. It is like baffling to me. It always, though, it's interesting, though. It always, whatever it was, even though it looks mild in hindsight, has always pissed off the older people, like the Beatles. Which, you know? Yeah, it's that been long extreme. hair. Oh, my God, that long hair is indecent. No. You know? And the, <laughs> if you look on, at their haircuts, like my- I mean, Fire! And that was like seen as like dropping f bombs at the yeah. time, yeah. Uh, you know, on, on television. But, but it, it, but what you're looking at right now is incredibly crazy to me. Incredibly crazy. I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. It does feel different. But I just wonder if we are are we doing that? Are we repeating that cycle? Is that it's, it's possible? But I don't. It, yeah. it's Sam Smith. Wearing, you know, uh, uh, with uh, you know, just a nut cutting speedo on stage with his nipples pierced, and I mean, just like, <laughs> oh, that that feels a little different than the Beatles having a slightly shaggy haircut, you know? Yeah, uh, maybe, but but you're right, wrong. you're right. Like, there's that thing, isn't there? Someone, I, someone was saying the other day. Um, I feel like all of my convictions. So one of my convictions is that Sam Smith's behavior is insane, immoral, ridiculous, whatever. I feel like all of my convictions, they feel quite right to me. And I'm sure you guys feel the same about your own. But we also, each of us individually know that it's very unlikely that we're the only person who's right about everything. So we must be wrong about some things. Some things must feel right that are wrong. And yeah, you're absolutely right that I think um, uh, everybody I know who was like a liberal lefty in the 90s is saying exactly the same thing, which is like, hey, I'm still the same, but suddenly, like, the left has changed and I've been pushed away. Well, maybe that's what always happens, and maybe left and right isn't what we thought it was in the 90s, you know, because I'm saying, like, I've got all these sort of leftist principles and things. Maybe I'm not, like, a lefty liberal that I was in the 90s. Maybe I am now a conservative, and that's how it happens. It's not as simple as, like, you you suddenly turn 30 and you just, like, have a an urge to join the Third Reich, right? What happens is you keep the same sensibilities and things that you learned were important for individual liberties when you were young, but the world changes, not necessarily for better or worse, around you. And suddenly you're like, what the fuck has happened? And it's happened to older people as we get older. It's happened it like since all the dawn the of time. time. We're left out. It happens all the time. That's my opinion. It happens all the time. When you're young, you want to see how how much life you can live and you want to experience everything. And then you get older yeah. and you're just like, okay, maybe that wasn't the best thing. And I look around and I just see everybody just going extremes because – Every generation has to push it a little farther, right? Yeah. And they're like, and there was a time, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just trying to justify where I am in my life and all that stuff. But there was a common sense to me that was the liberals were doing like, come on, man, people should be able to live their life. As long as, like you said earlier, as long as you're not hurting other people, you, you should be able to do whatever you want. Like, you know, the sexual revolution yeah. was like, I should be able to express myself however I want to. And there was a common sense to that. But now yeah. it's gone to such extremes to me where they're like, they're basically like today. I just saw this thing where Disney's, Disney is like, watch out. We're going to start doing some X-rated stuff now. You're like, what? <laughs> like, why do you what do you mean the, in the parks or what? with their entertainment oh no, on their disney plus they're going, that's not horrible just r-rated they're talking about x-rated x-rated program. you mean that right like you mean literally x-rated that's i'll i'll i'll, I'll, I'll just, i screenshotted it mm, from crazy. it was like apple news i don't know if you guys you probably can't see it but it literally says right there yeah can you put the, the... A screen share? I found the article already. Wow. X-rated content coming to Disney Plus platform. Yeah. Like, why? Like, why? This, this, like, I think historically, you know, if you go too far... Um, <laughs> Look at that. Let's see, X-ray. And it's DisneyDining.com. It's Disney putting this out. Not like some, like, oh, realamerican.co, you know? It's like, this is like Disney is saying this. And oh, I go... Man. Why? What? Like, why Disney? Like, everything I, you're doing culturally think, is oh, like. Oh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be on Hulu. Is what it is. Okay, it's they purchased mm. Hulu and they're saying that Hulu is going to have like because they already have like American Horror Story and stuff. Yeah, but why is Disney presenting that as Disney Plus? That's what it's being presented as. Mm. And like, why is Hulu gonna do 
not just R rate. Okay, you want to drop some F bombs? You want to have like Game of Thrones, like bone scenes where it's like we don't see anything, but we know what's going on. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm fine with that. It's HBO, it's adult. <laughs> Disney, Hulu, like it just seems yeah. crazy to me. Uh- I don't have I don't have Disney Plus, but I honestly thought, and the reason I don't, because I thought it was just pure kid shit. And it's I thought there was nothing over PG thirteen. It's just going to be R rated. That that's a misleading headline. I just perused. But why the... would Disney Dining put that out? Well, at Disney, I mean, it's just a blog. It's not like a crazy, or it's it's not a. It's not related to Disney. Sounds like there's a misinterpretation, but I, I think. I think the point is the point is like if you go too far right wing, you get all sorts of like over the top authoritarian yeah. racism, whatever. If you go too far left wing, it does. And no one wants to talk about this. It can lead to pedophilia because it is just too much. That's that that mother I met who was letting her kids be babysat. You know, if you go that far, you get useful idiots. She's a useful idiot who's just going <laughs> sure. like, no, because I want to save the minority. You know, she's gone so far that way, and then you've got predators who take advantage of the useful idiots unfortunately and that's when you've got sam smith who i'm not for legal purposes suggesting is a predator but who has incredibly (laughs) bad taste uh you know you get some people taking advantage of of uh useful idiots so i have uh i I have have, go on next i have a i have a friend that works at, at disneyland and uh she's security like kind of big deal and they have people out there looking for pedophiles like if you're there by yourself you're put on a on like a radar where like hey keep an eye on him because that's obviously a problem at disneyland but oh yeah when i'm at kids park i go why is this guy here by himself (laughs) boy star Star wars must have really really made them need to hire some new staff because you know all those dudes those lonely dudes there just to get on that star wars ride must (laughs) that's quite sad isn't it i know sad that there are there are but there are some guys who just want to go on the ride and because of all the horrible predators those guys now can't do that they're on a list yeah. well it's also yeah. that you know it's like i hate to tell you but when you see these you always see these guys like whether it's like these pedo hunters right yeah very rarely very rarely is it a man who looks like he can get adult women like like he yeah. can he can engage with adult women you mean the hunter or you're talking about the no, hunter the, or the, the, the the guy who's the pedophile that they John, been the John, the John, gotcha, the gotcha. John or whatever it's called, like very rarely XG does he look know. like he could. Have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Does, I interviewed you know, Chris Hansen on my podcast. Chris Hansen really? came on. You know, the take a seat. Yeah, guy. of course. He was great. But one of the things I said to him as well, and I, I interviewed another pedophile hunter as well, who's a woman the other day, and she goes and get her, her name's Elizabeth Courtney, and she goes around getting these guys. And I did say. Does part of you feel a bit bad because some of the people you've got in court are, are very clearly mentally ill and they don't really know what they're doing? And she's just like, well, look, if they know what they're doing is wrong enough to want to hide it, then, you know, they deserve what's coming to them. And I'm like, I, I get that. It, it's, it's like a complicated thing, isn't it? Because these guys are not well. Well, it's almost my, you know, when you get into like when somebody murders somebody, then they try to convince you that he is like special needs, like uh, sure. mentally handicapped. But I'm like, also, it's like, well, they did murder somebody. I mean, you know, yeah. so it's an interesting thing. But yeah, I, I just find it interesting. This like, you know, whenever you see these drag queen story hours, it's always like a bunch of white chicks with their infant babies acting like they're civil rights leaders. And it's just yeah. like it's very weird to me. It's just a very Use for weird the thing. Yeah. Hey guys, real quick. I want to tell you about a couple things you can find on the website, Sam It's everything you need. Audio video, all there of all my podcasts across the board. You can also get my dates there. You can also get t-shirts there. We are adding t-shirts all the time. We just added a uh, more DSing, less bombing. I love that one. Okay. You, we also got uh Yahweh or the highway new shirts Woo! are there. They should be up. It's a great way to support the show. Grab your t-shirt. Now, I got more magic coming. I also have a uh, mental gymnastics one everyone's going to really like. Listen, if you want to support the show, rockfin.com. $15, you get all my shows across all the boards. We also have Cash Daddies, uh, patreon.com slash Cash Daddies. Great way to make money in these difficult markets. We also have some affiliates. I'm going to hit them out real quick. Uh, if you're looking for gold and silver, a great way to go to Wise Wolf. Click the banner. 
Uh, brown hydrogen, brown gas. Everyone loves it. Harley Ray, our good friends in candles and crystals. You can get a, use the promo code Swarm15. Click that one. And Tim James, who was just on the show, universally loved. You can get a discount on all of his stuff on his website, Chemical Free Body. And then finally, Joel Staley, who's going to help me lose weight and get ready to rock. All those there, click the banners, support them, support us. It's a great way. And all my audio, all my video, again, right there at samtriplee.com. Enjoy the highlights. So I know we don't have you forever, so I just want to end on uh, a, a, a one more topic, cults. I find cults very interesting. I find hmm. the inter- – and, and are they always the cults you talk to? Are they always religious cults? Are there any other kind of cults? Are there like – crossfit cults or something like that where mm. i know there's some yoga stuff that went on where like these yogis were just banging everything that moved but um are they always religious yeah. cults no they're not they're not and 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 you're right yoga is a really good one there's sort of like jumbo juice uh book clubs can get cultish so oh, really? people have very different ideas about this but I, I i use the word cultish there was a great book by a, a cult expert called amanda montel called cultish and the suggestion is that any group is a cult, but it just depends how much on the spectrum, right? So maybe Heaven's Gate was a 10 out of 10, the one where they all poisoned themselves and died. Uh, Jonestown was a 10 out of 10. Maybe Scientology is a nine and a half out of 10, but maybe a local yoga group is like a two out of 10. And some of those ones in India, they get pretty high up that scale because they're run by these crazy nut jobs. And then the religion aspect, I've been thinking about this for a while and I wondered, do you need religion for a cult to work? Well, firstly, there's multi-level marketing, you know, pyramid schemes. Well, those are cults, right? And they have a leader at the top. They feel coerced to keep giving more and more of their money to people above them and take more money from the people below them. They're being worked around the clock to the point of exhaustion. They're cut off from their families and friends. These are all the signs of a cult and there's no religion there. Then you get stuff like Scientology. Scientology is just the most fascinating cult. Everyone's interested in it, partly because of Tom Cruise, John Travolta, Kirsty Alley, Lisa Marie Presley. The, I mean, the actress from Handmaid's Tale, um, Elizabeth Moss, she's playing a character who's in a cult, but she's in Scientology. She's in a cult. Yeah, crazy. Bart, Sim Bart Simpson's um, uh, voice actor, she's in a cult as well. So she's in Scientology. So you look in, let's look at Scientology. Scientology, as many people know, something to do with aliens, right? That's what a lot of people sort of think is some alien Lord Xenu, e evil overlord, galactic Lord Xenu. Now that story is actually that Lord Xenu was in another planet somewhere. There was overpopulation of like billions. So he sent like billions of people from those planets because it was too crowded. I think they were prisoners as well. He sent them to Earth and put them all in volcanoes to kill them. And their spirits came out and they put the spirits in a, in a cinema, and in the cinema, like a movie theatre, they were treated to all these films about Christianity, Jesus, Judaism, and Islam, all this stuff, to brainwash them. So the idea of Scientology is, we're gonna unbrainwash you from all of those religions and teach you the true truth, which is that you're gonna live forever, and you might as well just give us all your money. That's the main bit. Now, the amazing thing about that, so that, that's sort of like a religion, it's a folklore, there is a story, a creation story at the beginning of Scientology, like any religion might have. The funny thing is, the vast majority of Scientologists have never heard of that, right? Try and find me a devout Christian or Jew who's not heard of like Moses or Jesus, it doesn't happen. Most Scientologists have never heard of this, because you can only get to hear about it when you get to something called OT, which is Operating Thetan Level 3. To get to level three, you've already paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to get all the books, the materials, the auditing, which is their version of therapy with the lie detectors and shit like that. And eventually you've been in there for years. You've given up your life. You've told all your friends, go away. You've dropped your family. You've spent all your kids' future money. You've lost everything in your life. You've been worked to within an inch of your life for minimum wage in Scientology. And then they sit you down and go, by the way, there's an alien who blah, 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 blah. And then it's like your brain is so frazzled you've given up so much by the time you're at this point that you don't even question it you go okay now there's an alien okay right well, whatever yeah. and yeah. some of the people i've interviewed who have left scientology they left because they watched the south park they weren't supposed to watch it because they're told that if you find out too early about the creation story you get pneumonia and die so that's what they will believe. So this one guy i spoke to he's such a lovely guy he left scientology and the the next day he, he watched the South Park episode. Oh, no, he watched it the night before, sorry. And the next morning he woke up and he was like, am I still here? 
oh my God, it was all a lie. I don't have pneumonia. And he was like checking if he had pneumonia. And he realized, oh my God, I've spent 20 years in this thing. That was a crock of shit. So it did have a sort of religion in Scientology, but they've already got you by that time. And then Nixium came along. That was another cult last year or the year before, you know, and that was Great. another celebrity back thing. They copied Scientology, like almost the blueprint of Scientology. Uh, celebrities being really, really important. That's the main thing. So Alison Mack, the actress from uh, Smallville, and there were yeah. a few relatively famous people in there. And they would have talks by the Dalai Lama and Richard Branson. You know, it's always the celebrity, get them in, involved. But Nixium didn't have anything like that. There was no folklore. It was all just, we're going to make you happy. We know how to do it. Here's how you should sell Nixium to other people, blah, blah, blah. And people still signed up. So the interesting lesson from Nixium was like, you don't really need the alien thing. You don't need the religion. You just need to tell people you can fix them. You can make them happy. You can make them feel part of an exclusive group because they targeted suburban uh, housewives of rich men, Nixium. So it was basically women who typically were aspiring actresses or, yeah. you know, playboy bunnies, those kinds of things who had loads of money, but like too much time and, and yeah. no purpose. And we'll give you purpose. That's yeah. what everyone wants, purpose. Yeah. So that's my long answer to it. I, I don't, you don't need a religion to, to be a cult. Uh, so we had a guy on, you might want to check him out. His name's Recluse. And uh, he was breaking down um, a bit uh, the whole thing with um uh l ron hubbard and l yeah. there there's a real there's a real chance that l ron hubbard was navy intelligence and his whole right. job was to be sent into uh jack parsons uh dark arts occult that was working on uh rocket propulsion and basically everybody who helped work on nasa which is you know walt disney you know, it's so interesting. Walt Disney, L. Ron Hubbard, Vaughn Braun, and Jack Parsons. They all yeah. worked together. And then basically all of them went on to create these giant entities, Disney and, and uh, Scientology. And I, there's a real big part of me that believes that Scientology is a Navy intelligence operation. And that's why mm. they end up getting all these people that might be homosexual and blackmail them into basically, you know, feeding the beast in one hand and then giving them fame and then being able to control them so that they basically feed the machine of Scientology and do whatever they want. It's 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 yeah. super interesting. And like when these guys get to this level and it's like the the final boss is like some scribbling on a paper of like doodles and they're like, you're totally right. They're By the time they get to that, they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're like, what the fuck is this? What am I looking <laughs> yeah. at? This doodling on a paper. And it's just like, it's too late. And then when you try yeah. to leave, you try to leave. They just have all, you know, there was, you know, there was that one director that was coming out about all the stuff Scientology did. And now he's on trial for a sexual assault. Mm. Who's that? Uh, who was the one director that was in a, in, in, I think it was the, sh uh, doc clear, uh, sign former uh, Scientology director. You want to look that up? Uh, Johnny, can you former explain? Okay. Yeah. It's a, a guy who, what, who, defected so there was a guy who came out defected from a director who defected from Scientology and yeah. is now on trial for sexual assault. Because hmm. okay, Danny Masterson was on trial, the actor from that 70s show, and he's now gone to prison for 30 years. But yeah, he wasn't leaving like, Scientology. Yeah. But, but you, you know what? I would say I don't know enough about those those kinds of conspiratorial origins. I do. I have heard Jack, Jack Parsons mentioned with L. Ron Hubbard before. I have heard about the black magic and Satanism going on. And I've heard uh, that Charles Manson uh, basically did what he did because of Scientology. So Scientology got Man – Manson did years of Scientology, and nobody even talks about that. But if you guys want – because I haven't gone too far down this path, but as people who are interested in conspiracies and seeing if they're true or not, I think the best place to look is Hollywood right now because there are murmurings about Tom Cruise and like, I don't, I don't know how to put this all together quite yet, right? But Tom Cruise works with the same director every time, Christopher McQuarrie, right? Who was yeah. the writer of The Usual Suspects. Christopher McQuarrie, for some reason, I came to find out uh, you look at where he's registered at living. He, he's not supposed to be a Scientologist, but he lives officially in 
Tom Cruise's daughter's house in Clearwater, Florida, where you only live if you're a Scientologist. Mm. So something fishy is going on there. Then if you look on just on Wikipedia at the Mission Impossible films, they've gone from having a whole team of producers and all these people, blah, 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 very gradually to just Tom Cruise and Christopher McQuarrie having the whole franchise, just the two of them. They are the budget has gone up in that time like tenfold. Tom Cruise is known to give hundreds of millions, funnel hundreds of millions into Scientology. And it's now being rumored that Cruise is trying to buy Paramount. So I don't know exactly what's going on here, but what I do know is that the idea behind Scientology is that you are somebody who can defy anything. You, you, and, and Tom Cruise is basically a deity. They were, I mean, I spoke to one woman who got into Scientology because Tom Cruise came to her in a dream as a deity and <laughs> recruited her. That's how she sees it anyway. Um, and so him being in all of these movies, Top Gun, Mission Impossible, every single time he saves the world, he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do as a Scientologist. So we don't know what, to what extent Scientology got him to where he was, to what extent he is basically an agent of Scientology now buying Paramount, and to, how, to what extent Mission Impossible, the series, and Paramount now are basically vehicles for Scientology. It, it's really far-reaching. unbelievable. Wow. Mm. Paul Haggis, by the way, is who you're talking about. Yeah, I didn't really. It's a civil rape trial that Paul Haggis is on. Oh, yeah. And that 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 gets into some crazy stuff, how it's like they can just take you out now with this Me Too stuff. Nobody's going to no, don't nothing criminal, but you can be taken out financially now. And it's just yeah. like oh, Russell Brand, mm -hmm. just like yeah. Russell Brand. Um, yeah. wow. Okay. Well, uh, Andrew, this has been great, man. We really do appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, one more time. Oh, can you. you tell us, uh, tell our guests where they can find you? Yeah. Audio podcast on the edge with Andrew gold, or just go to YouTube and, uh, oh, go to YouTube and search my name. There is a singer, ignore him. Um, ignore do not click him because he'll, he'll go higher in the Google rankings if you click on him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, go and have a, a look at uh, on the edge with Andrew gold. So real quick, have you ever the guy who did the Kinsley Institute? What's his name, Johnny? Um, Edward Kinsley. Oh, Ken Kinsey, Kinsey, Kinsey. Have you ever looked into Kinsey. him? Uh, no, I watched that movie a while ago. Liam Neeson plays him, and and he's obviously a weird guy, isn't he? No, 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 no. You oh, should not look a weird into guy. him, dude. He is what that guy got away with is so absolutely. I'm going to do an episode on him. I mean, dude, the fact that there is an institute dedicated to this guy at Indiana University is so disgusting. What he did is so disgusting. Openly, wow. and he is ba his research, uh, it's so, you should look into it, man. I, I don't want to get too much into it because we're wrapping up here, but okay. what he did is disgusting. We need to do a whole episode on it. Uh, yeah. I mean, just legal pedophilia is so disgusting. And the fact that there is a giant like institute dedicated to him is so wrong, but it's so, fucking mad. Yeah. Oh, wait, I got to tell I got to tell you then about Kentler very quickly, the Kentler experiment in Germany. This, that's the worst. I, 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 cause I've got a feeling I got a, I got a story top. If somebody tells it, I've, I've got to be like, <laughs> no, no, but you need to hear about this guy Kentler in Berlin. Cause I was studying this while I was looking into all these pedophiles and stuff. So Kentler in the 1980s was, was very far left. He was part of like the green party. He was linked to it and whatever. So he had some of those sort of feelings. Um, and, they had two big problems in Berlin at the time in the 80s, right? One of them is that they had too many pedophiles. They didn't know what to do with them. They, they just had no idea what do we do with all these pedophiles. The other thing is they had too many homeless young boys, right? And so they decided, Kentler decided, the best thing to do was to kill two birds with one stone. Well, we'll put the homeless boys with the pedophiles. This actually happened as foster parents for the pedophiles. Now, obviously, uh, for, for the kids, the kids were just abused to within inches of their lives. They can't even talk properly about it now because they're like mentally gone from the experiences they had. And that is still being covered up in Berlin. Gradually, bits are coming out because people are still alive. It was only 30, 40 years ago. People who were implicated in it, people who, who ordered it, are still alive and they won't let papers about it come out. Kentler's dead, but the rest of them, you know, they've got blood the on Kentler their hands. Kentler what? Kentler experiments. Wait, wait, so was that was designed as an experiment, or was that designed as just a, a like a sort of a like a beneficial like a solving of two problems, like you said? What was the idea? Yeah, of, was it, it actually it was an a experiment? Bit of, it was a bit of both, I think. It was to solve the problem and see if this works. We can apply it to the rest of Germany. So, but what was Kentler the what was, I mean, they they thought 
perhaps that these they wouldn't be abused the the, the kids is that the that, idea? that's what i'm not sure on and i don't think anyone is we're not is it like was it that they thought okay the kids won't be abused or that they will but at least they'll have food on the table you know i don't know oh, what god. they were thinking oh my god this. this is the craziest thing i've ever heard in my life the that's Yorkers why you get me on the podcast the, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> this is unbelievable it's like if this Louis is... Theroux actually covered interesting uh, topics. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love Louis. I grew up I watching too. Louis. I love, I love Louis yeah. too. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> I love Louis. I, I want him to come on my podcast one day. Dude, so it's I could, I could so never, crazy yeah. that somebody, no, I love him. No, I love him. I'm just somebody joking. pitched that yeah. idea and nobody was like, uh, that's the dumbest idea I ever heard. It's power, man. It's what happens when power happens. There's hierarchies and, and people are like, are you sure, man? Because there are murmurings. This Kentler guy was, I don't think he was a pedophile. He was a hebophile. A hebophile is somebody who is attracted to post-puberty uh, pu post kids. Oh, so 13 oh. to 17 kind of thing. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, like J.D. Salinger was apparently a hebophile. But, um, Interesting. Yeah, wow. I, I wonder if they have like a culture war, you know, between the pedophiles and the, what was that again? He what was the, the hebophile? Hebophiles. hebophiles. Well, yeah. Yeah. They have their oh own forum, you know, God. their own subreddit. And that yeah, gets yeah, into yeah. like, the like, you know, listen, man, I mean, the abortion issue, that's a, that's a very sensitive issue, you know, but the truth of the matter is like, you bring a lot of people in this world that don't have parents, man. They have a hard life, man. It's really yeah. sad. And the fact that somebody out there pitched this dumb fucking idea makes me so sad. Oh, it's my sad. God. It's sad, but that's what got me writing that book. So hopefully I'll get to write it and it'll be out sometime I know, soon. I know we got to go, but what what drives you? Like, did, did you just want to be a journalist and then you just realize that there's there's a, a more, uh, a better avenue through digital content that yeah, yeah. allows you to reach more people. Is that what happened? You want to be a reporter and you like kind of just surveyed the land and that's kind of how, w what, what you got into. Okay. Here's what happened. And it's a little bit controversial. So don't speak about it too often, but I'm, I'm never afraid to talk about it because it's true and it's what happened. Uh, but, I made these documentaries. It was it was hard work. I wanted to be like Louis Theroux or my, uh, Michael Moore, whoever. Like I wanted to be one of those guys. And I loved. I learned five languages. I went abroad, and I in my twenties went and learned to speak five languages because I thought in the future, you know, maybe people don't want to read subtitles. I think I was wrong. People are more used to subtitles now. But so I'm going to be the guy who can do it in those languages. That's going to be cool. So I worked my ass off and I went to all these places and I found the most mad stories that were like really extreme, whatever. So that exorcism one, I pitched to the BBC. They weren't really interested, but I did it anyway. And I filmed it just with a friend of mine. And then we took two years trying to sell it to them. And eventually they were like, oh yeah, we like this. And it won awards and stuff. It was mad. And, and sometimes it's better when you do it that way because it's just two of you and you've got like a vision and I got to learn how to edit while doing it and all that shit. Um, and I went and then thought, okay, I've had this thing. It was a huge success in England. You can still watch it. People can see it on YouTube if they want. Exorcism, Andrew Gold. I don't usually suggest it because I don't get paid or anything, but you can just type in my name in Exorcism. You'll find it on YouTube. Uh, mad documentary. The Exorcist tries to kill me in the end. It's, it's completely crazy. Yeah. And I thought that's going to be like, it's yeah, he locked me in a room. It's a whole thing. But like, I thought that was going to be like my big thing. Like, oh, this is my break. I went to about 200 production meetings, right? I got an agent. Every single one of them, every fucking single one of them, halfway through said, the thing is, because you're a white man, you you cannot be on the screen. So we'll take your ideas what? and we're going to have to have somebody who is a minority be on the screen. So I was like, wait, so wait, I'm you're sorry, have... just to be clear here, you are, these are meetings with like B people at the BBC is what you're saying. People no, it's in, independent pub, product, production companies okay. who know that the BBC won't take it unless okay. that's the case, or, or at least they're going to be far more likely to. So, uh, you know, I looked up the stats and the stats showed that people from minorities are in the UK on TV, like doubly overrepresented, right? And white men are underrepresented. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not that I, like, like, what the fuck do I care? I don't care about loads of other people getting a job. I care about me getting a job. So yeah. I'm just sitting there as a selfish prick going, yeah, I don't care. Why can't I just get this job? It took about five years of pushing and pushing and pushing every production company saying the same thing. And eventually I said, fuck this. I'm starting a podcast because I had, I had a list of like a hundred documentaries I wanted to make by that point. And I said, right, I'll start interviewing them, starting with the Westboro Baptist church. That was my first ever episode. I said, sorry, mate, I know I wanted to do a documentary about this. Come and do a podcast with me. And that's how it started. And no one cares about my skin color, which is such a nice thing. Huh. It's it funny because, you know, they, they frame, me. they frame 
digital media and YouTube and and podcasting as sort of uh, a right wing, uh, you know, kind of yeah. a cloistered, like we're a closed community. But this is, I mean, it's kind of people have been pushed like you into this direction. It's the only place to, you oh, know, yeah. they can find an outlet for their for their work. I had to think about this recently. There was two big scandals in the UK recently. There was a, a guy called Hugh Edwards, who, uh, who was a big BBC, very serious journalist, who was found to have been sending photos to 17-year-olds. And then there was Dan Wooten, who's like a 34-year-old, I don't know, uh, shock jock kind of guy. You know, that kind of... And he had also been found to have been doing these kinds of things. And so they were both in the news a lot. And people were like so respectful and surprised about what happened to Hugh Edwards. And with the other guy, it was like, well... And I had a thought like, yeah, but there's a sliding doors moment here we like to put people in boxes and say this guy's a shock jock this guy's a very serious budding journalist right but i know there was probably a moment when they were both 18 and they, they or 21 and they applied for a job at the bbc one of them got it maybe they had friends there maybe they got lucky they got that job and so they were incentivized for the next 40 years of his career to be mr serious man doing the bbc and he gets to then look down at the shock jock guy who didn't get that opportunity. And the only way he could then make things work was by being a bit more sensationalist. And then you become, as I have sometimes on YouTube, a bit more incentivized to talk about things like Meghan Markle and Scientology, you know, Tom Cruise and things like that, which I wouldn't probably have chosen to do because my ego likes to think I'm an intellect or whatever stupid yeah. thing my ego thinks. But you get pushed into boxes and you're absolutely right. That's why I think it, not right wingness, but that's why we have that right wing reputation as podcasters because it's the only the only people who have us on because we're white guys and it's like yeah. unbelievable to me and it's just so crazy how like you just watch this thing slow roll out and you know if you look at like what's going on with Marvel Comics they can't it's so interesting the whole thing is about just replacing what was. And it, and sometimes it happens. If you if we've talked about it on the show before, if you study what was going on with Blade, which is the story of a black vampire who kicks ass, they basically want to replace him with women. And then you look at like women, they want to replace with trans. And then uh. who are they gonna replace trans with? People in wheelchair. I like. It's just. It's like. It's just nonstop cultural Marxism replacement. That hmm. just is getting mm. super crazy right now. And it's just like this notion because there's this notion through like people like you're very good at your job. I can tell. I, I haven't seen your podcast oh, you. yet, but I can tell that you're very thorough. You're intellectual. You're you're really good with your words, you know. So I'm sure your podcast just and your YouTube channel must crush. It must be great, man. Uh, but the notion well, that the, the notion is that it's not a meritocracy. They they don't think entertainment and talking is a meritocracy. They think anyone could do anything. They just di didn't yes. have, let's say, the um the they didn't have the opportunity. They want to believe that you telling this incredible story of somebody who was told no, you can't do it. They want to believe in their head you got the opportunity and they never did it. So if we just shoehorn people in. It's going to be yeah. the same thing. And the reality is like, it's not it, it, yeah. like there's a ton of people that have there's, tried there's to talent and, and hard work. My, my friend, I got a friend, do you know, Coleman Hughes? Have you heard of him? Yes. So he's been on my podcast a couple of times and he's, he's super smart. He's an African-American guy. And he said like, you know, because there, there are some elements of what you just said are true. Of course, there was some, I had more opportunity than a guy who was like a kid who was born in a garbage truck in like somewhere in Africa. You know, my opportunity was infinitely more than their opportunity. But what Coleman says is if you want to do that, you want to try and make some, okay, I get that. Start with the communities, help the communities to prosper. You don't go to the end of the game, the end of the line and go, no, 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 like give Give these people the best job you don't that's not how it works you make the opportunities better help the if you really want to put in some form of cultural mark or let's call it some socialism right i i don't have a problem with that start it at the roots at the at the very beginning in the communities you don't start it at the end by making corporations like the bbc hire people based on their race because the word for that is is, is racism unfortunately no you're you're too but and it's also equality versus equity and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know for me like the truth is like yeah i totally believe that everybody should have equal opportunity but at the end of the day the best the best should get it because anything yeah. less especially in this day and age right where it's like the fact that anyone listens to this podcast is is a blessing of life I, i'm very yeah. blessed 
you know, because there are so many opportunities out there, you know, that, that they could listen to anything. So the fact that they spend some time with me, I always keep my listeners, uh, their, 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 their needs and their beliefs and, uh, in, in mind, when I do my show, I try to service them the best of my ability. The notion that you can just throw anything up and somebody is automatically going to watch it so it doesn't matter has just blown up spectacularly in their faces yeah. uh, to the point that they have gone out of their way to push this belief system that they're destroying wonderful brands that have been around forever in this attempt to like look at saturday night live i have a friend on saturday night live right now i wanted to do as well but what they're doing on there is so bad it's just yeah. such you know what's it is bad i can't watch saturday night live but because it is that bad but you know what they're doing now so those channels have just fucked up I, I know more about the british ones but they're just like no one's watching them i get more from i can i can click live in a minute right just click that like button and within a few minutes i'll have more people watching me and i'm not even like one of the big you know imagine someone like tim paul you know i went on tim paul it's fifty thousand people just in there within a second right insane um these tv channels nowhere near those kinds of figures especially after a few days like our oh, youtube videos are racking up the hundreds of thousands um <laughs> but recently i've noticed on the youtube homepage. You scroll down like a couple of bars or whatever, it has those TV channels now on YouTube high up. So they're obviously paying to get prime of play, you know. And YouTube, the whole point of YouTube was it wasn't supposed to be about that. It was supposed to be a free for all. So YouTube are fucking themselves up because people are not going to like that. But it's yeah. a way that it's like you guys, you TV channels had all the money, you had all the prestige, you had the TV, you had you had the TVs. Like we didn't have access to that. You have teams of people. We are doing it, each of us. You guys, me, all of us, we're doing it as like a team of one or two or three people on our own. And yet they get to come in and go, oh gosh, they're doing it better than us. Okay, well, let's just pay YouTube with the endless money we've got. And YouTube are going, okay, up you go. So they'll never let us beat them. And I don't blame them because that's capitalism, you know, but YouTube shouldn't be letting that happen. Yeah, they're running themselves into the ground. But then again, I think yeah. YouTube is a CIA platform. All right, Andrew, uh, one more time. Tell them where they can find you. And then <laughs> Oh, yeah, thank you. On the edge, I'll, I'll try not to bring up another crazy story. No, on the I, edge with dude, Andrew Gold. I, oh, damn, that story was insane. We could do a whole episode yeah, on that. Seriously. Yeah, man. Yeah, crazy. yeah, but yeah, on the on the edge with Andrew Gold uh, podcast. And yeah, thanks guys for having me. Andrew, you were great. Thanks for coming on. Open door whenever else, you, anytime you want to come on, guys. I again, thank you so much for sponsoring Chaos Qu Twins. It's doing amazing. If you guys can go check it out. Uh, we're, we're raising money and hopefully by the end, we'll have enough to do an animation. We're very blessed. I can't thank you enough. Check out Sam Tripoli for all the dates. I had some new dates. Let's see if they got up. Uh, Austin. Yeah. Austin tomorrow night, Dallas on Sunday. Then I have a, uh, special, uh, I'm doing a revival and then I'm doing El Monte. So go check those out, grab tickets and enjoy these highlights. Here's a clip from the latest broken sim. Listen to this. It is the funny. No climate justice on occupied land. 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 Is her voice changing? Like, what, yeah, is she of course. Hitting, is she hitting when male it's puberty? time to change, you got to rearrange. <laughs> what is she, what does that mean? No, she's saying no, no climate justice on occupied land. Right? On occupied land. What does that which mean? Which is like saying we need gun control at the vegan restaurant, right? Like it's like two different causes that you've just mushed together for absolutely no reason, and it makes no sense. It confuses the hell out yeah, of me. I can't it's even. It's nothing. It's just like she's getting all of her like all of her causes. She's I feel like to, you just asked me to think about infinity. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, but what? think about no, that. No, She's no. trying to mash two mo two causes into one cause, which makes it's no like sense. That news story we had a couple of weeks ago where they took Sarah Silverman's name and got it yeah, into that yeah, Kevin yeah, Brennan yeah, story. Yeah, it, yeah, that's yeah. exactly what yeah. she's doing. So yeah. she's trying to say that we're Israel. We're not going to protect the climate in Israel because. They're occupying Palestinian land. That's what she's trying to say. Like, we're going to hold off helping your environment because you're occupying Palestine. That's literally <laughs> so what she's crazy. saying. It's okay. You know, this thing is literally the fate of the entire world, but we're going to put it on a hold. Yeah, yeah. We're going to figure we're, out this. By the way, the environment will not be saved 
in your strip of land. <laughs> Everywhere else, we're working the same. In your area, you're fucked. Enjoy acid rain and old, yeah. holes in old zones. Get, right? It makes no sense. Get ready for Israel warming. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Israel warming. Right. That's like what she's <laughs> so doing. Stupid. What does that even mean? Dude? It's just like she's just a robot. Oh, do you think she goes to school? Like, what did they, they, or do they just? No, like, she's like eighteen now. Really? She's like, but 18, is she going to college 19. or anything? Like, I wonder no, if they just fly uh, why her would around. Why would she go though? to college? She's making so much money. Yeah, they just fly. Doing her. All Look at this guy on the right, by the way. Look, he's got his yeah. face painted. And Look at it. What is that? Can you guess, guy or girl? Oh, it's a, it's a guy. That's a guy who what wants is, to be well, a girl, though, I know, he's right? Got eye makeup on. Well, him. look at like how smooth his skin is. No, you're right. It's right, a big like normal too. guys don't have that smooth a skin. But look at this. He's got like But his... look at that fist. That says it's a guy. Yeah, the, the skin the says it's a wrist. girl and the hair says it's a I girl. I don't that fist though. Look, it's a broken yeah, wrist. It's he's like, like this. Yeah, it's, it's like those guys that you see and they shoot BLM a gun like this. BLM is the best. Have you ever seen in, in movies where they have people shooting the guns like this with their wrists broken, you know, where it, yeah. if they fired a gun in that position, it would just hit them yeah. right in the nose? Yeah. Yeah, it's just so weird, dude. It's so weird. No, that's so stupid. No climate So some guy climate. comes up and grabs the mic if you watch. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah that's a guy. Oh, it's a guy. Look at that Adam's apple. I think we are running out of time. But I think many of you have heard me speak before. You know my message. It's still the same. And it's going to be the same for the coming years as well. So we don't want to take up too much of your time. Thank you. So this guy comes up, watches. this guy. No, what happened? There's That's so weird. I saw a video where a guy comes up and grabs the mic from her, and it becomes a big thing. Different event, maybe? Whoa, that's really weird. Anyway, so that's it. And then the other thing that's very funny is, um, so now there's a whole thing about trans for Palestine. Like, and listen, <laughs> that it, 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 doesn't make any oh, sense. No, I have to say, I'm sorry. They, the, the Palestinians wouldn't listen, have much to do with You could support trans. the Palestinian people. Okay. They're different from Hamas. Hamas are sellout scumbag controlled opposition. We who, all know that. Yeah, who would right. I, like I was talking to this the other day. I said, it's like, if, could, if they're really a terrorist organization, why hasn't the international banking organization frozen their bank accounts? Yeah. They're like, oh, well, yeah. they're with, they're with, uh, they're with this one, dude. It's all the same banking organization. Yeah. It's just like they're playing both sides. It's money that goes from Biden to Iran. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all the Hamas, same. Yeah. It's if they were really what you think they are, they would have their bank accounts frozen, and they wouldn't be able to. They wouldn't be able to own yachts as their people get slaughtered. It's crazy. So, but the the notion of trans. For Palestine, it's just like yeah. it's and like, like you could love Palestine, but it's just, just like, don't go there. You know? Well, it's just like you're bringing out the big guns. What I'm talking about is this chick's dicks. Okay, <laughs> a bunch of chick dicks are coming out for Palestine. Oh, dude! And they like, I like imagine being trans in Palestine. Like you have, it's like, do you care? Forget Even yeah. well, you, you know, it's great though because you can wear that burqa and nobody knows a thing. Yeah, and, and like, what what are you gonna do if someone gets your pronouns wrong? In, in Gaza. Well, you're going to complain. You're going to yeah. send a complaint up hey, to the listen, top of Hamas. Hey, um, listen. Just listen. Okay. You know, it's, like, it's like a guy complaining about his goats being stolen. Like another guy complaining about Israelis killing his children. And then, uh, yeah, uh, they called me sir, and I'm they, them. Yeah. You know? and, so, <laughs> and then, boom, that's all they do. So that's it, Johnny. It's over. Can, what else? I got to go. I really well, got to uh, go. We got 10 more minutes for... Uh, an hour and a half, which is Ugh, what we said we were shooting me, for. Dude. We didn't start until 10.30 tonight. You're uh, killing me. We're running a little late here, folks. Uh, no fault of anybody. Sam was Yeah, it's your fault, you freak. What do you mean? Freak. You told me we started at 10.30. We started at 10.30. You're the worst. Did you see that LAPD used a robot to get this guy off the bus this week? Did you see this? The ro They used one of those robo dogs from, uh, you know, uh, the East Coast. Does, you know, what's it called? Uh, yeah. DARPA. Oh, oh no! LAPD yeah, dude. Look at this. A robot LAPD. dog to assist with an hours-long standoff on a metro bus involving an armed Black suspect. Mirror, man. Everything came Look to a that. peaceful end. KTLA. Yeah, when Logan, you freak out, if you're like, oh gosh, okay, I'm done. They even painted it black, man.
They want it to look intimidating. Frank, good morning. That's right. This look did come to a peaceful You're end. Like, the suspect uh, uh, eventually uh, uh, surrendered they get, to police. They give her, no they give her Twitter. They should give her OnlyFans, too. <laughs> without incident. You can see here behind is, me is that the Armenian scene possibly? is all clear. But you mentioned this robot dog. This new technology really played a very big part in bringing this situation to a calm resolution. Now, take a look. This is the video. You can see this robot dog with the LAPD, this, with the SWAT on the team bus. Look in at full action this morning. This is Melrose and Western. Come off the, the bus. The suspect was taken that into custody so with scary. the help of this robot dog. That is so look scary. How, look how confused this guy is getting off the bus. Though. He's One like, what the fuck was that? The dog to assist, saying the use of this technology really helped resolve the situation without putting like any officers or him. community members in harm's way. You can see in this video the suspect cooperating with officers as he surrendered. This all started around 4.30 this morning. The call came in uh, from a passenger. Bring out the dog the again. Bus, the 911 call. Isn't that crazy, dude? Yeah, he's like trying to argue his thing. He's like, hey, man, why are you sending Terminators in? I'm just hijacking a it's bus. It's the future, dude. It's the future, man. There's this great new uh, RoboCop video game that just came out that I've been playing. Yeah. Um, I think they're pre prepping us for RoboCop becoming a real situation. So did you see that this airplane took off and it didn't have any windows, dude? An airplane, like a real jetliner took off it's from usa today a flight from london to orlando so like a transatlantic flight had to turn around because after after passengers passengers discovered that some of the cabin windows were missing after the plane took off yeah the uh welcome to the world of diversity in the airlines and now a highlight from cash daddies the over under is 30 years Who's I, I say he'll do under. What do you guys now, say? No, wait. Do you mean what he'll be sentenced to or what he'll actually do? What he'll actually do. Un oh, here, under. Under. Uh, I'm going to go under, and here's what I think will happen. He will be fake murdered, and they will get him out, and he'll get some corrective surgery done, and he'll go live his life. As, he'll as just his live wife. His life. As his wife. As, a, as something, but he's never going to do that time. His family is way too way too powerful for that to happen. They'll fake death him. Cameras will be off and it, they'll shave his head and make him like Puerto Rican or something and he'll live his rest it's of his life. I can't no, he's really that. recognizable though. You're going to have to do some work to uh, to make him look different. No, go a... have him go live in Costa Rica, bro. They'll be like, yeah. go live down there. You don't have to do shit. Go bang strange. Do Adderall. Just stay. Don't make any trades and don't try to start any crypto bullshit. No, nah, he'd, he'd have to get a job. Like, shave your head because he could pass for a Mexican. Just yeah, I totally, head. totally. Shave Mexican. I'm telling you, dude, make him. He looks kind of like his ex girlfriend already. Just make him look yeah. like that chick. And, Teach and, and kill her. Dishes. Look, you got to wash dishes, man. I know it's going to suck, but six hours a day, you know, here's a surfboard and here's a fucking some dish soap. And uh, look, have a happy life. You're lucky you're out. What a yeah. fall, though. Like, what a fall. Can you imagine being, you know, stat wealthy and then now you're going to be in jail? Like, Dude, about it's 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 the fall. It's the same thing that happened to Carl Smencia. Like, they they did this to themselves. This whole thing collapsed. Because he went after Binance. And Binance was his, had $2 billion in his exchange. And he told them to go after him. And when he heard, he pulled his money out, which started the run, and it all collapsed. And it's the exact same thing in Carlos Mencia. There's this new thing called The Dark Side of Comedy coming out. And they interview uh, Carlos Mencia about, like, where he is right now and it's just like it's almost sad at this point where it's just like really that's oh, the only, only press he can get and like again i love i mean like i i believe in second chances i would like the guy to get a second chance but going around telling people you didn't steal jokes yeah. is just never gonna ever allow you to get to where you need to go well because, i thought he had kind of been contrite on that like didn't he apologize like it kind of yeah, but he, like, he, he flips back and forth like one second he's like i don't do that anymore the next second he's like i never did that and it's just like bro that's, a, every that's somebody time, you can't trust yeah yeah every time you say you didn't steal a joke you reset yourself you have to buy it but it's like that whole thing is because carlsman sees ego told him to walk up on stage and fucking get in rogan's face and that was the end. And it wasn't even, stupid. you know, and the truth is, it's not even joke stealing that, that destroyed him. 
It was the fact that they found out he wasn't Mexican. That was the biggest fraud. That's ethics. That's, you know, yeah. we had another. Who else did we find that out about? Somebody else. We talked about this on the show. They also lied. No, you the the, the guy. He just did a uh, the, that good looking Indian kid who was like, who was like, I got anthrax sent to my house oh, and yeah. none of it's true. Yeah, that's... Vivek Ramaswamy. No, the uh, the the comic. He, uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, damn. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. And, yeah, I, yeah. and now he put out a video trying to uh, debunk it. It's like, bro, you're you're done, dude. Stick a fork in. I've forgotten about it's, that. Did, and I it, like him. He was a nice guy. I haven't seen him in like ten years, but he was an he's a nice he was a nice guy when I met him. Like you knew he was gonna blow up. Mm, you know that yeah. shiny and good looking and funny. It, it was gonna happen, but you can't wow. lie about you can't act like you're oppressed when you're not oppressed at all. You're an, you're an incredibly good looking Indian guy. There is no higher status yeah, in like, America than good looking Indian. Doesn't yeah? It's it, it's 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 a shame because it's like you have the race card. But it's locked away. You know what I mean? Like you got it, but you can't ever use it because you're you're that good looking, and you're uh, you're that good looking, and you have you're from a demographic that has the highest standard of li living yeah. in America. It's like they you took have a your race. Standard. Asians have a higher standard of living than Jews. It's just a fact. Yeah, these yeah, are yeah. facts. Have you yeah, seen? That's because, that's because if you eat rice all the time, the market it's damn healthy. No, dude. Have, you, have you know this guy michael lewis right who's written like some great yeah. you know like some of our favorite books and you yeah. know like uh dude you don't even know my liar, favorite books li liar's poker he wrote liars yeah poker. He, he wrote liars poker Moneyball. he wrote uh what uh oh the undoing but he wrote Moneyball. uh well he did a book about sam bankman fried that came out yeah like early october and this book right i was gonna start reading it and then i started flipping through the reviews he apparently bought all of Sam Bankman Fried's shit. And the book praises Sam Bankman Fried as like this genius, you know, that's like, oh, you know, he's really, he's like trying really hard to build a company and he's a good guy. And he, and I went back and looked and he did a lot of press around early October about how Sam Bankman Fried's kind of a chill guy. And the whole yeah. book is kind of defending. Um, uh, and everybody in the comments is like, how did Michael Lewis miss on this? So I just wanted to say, like, Sam Bankman Fried obviously has something something about him that is tricky you know what i mean that is deceitful enough to even fool somebody like michael lewis who is credited as being a real skeptic and a sharp guy who writes you know some of our like i said some of the our favorite books of the past well you know years. it's it's also that like that that world was so new like it was so new yeah yeah, yeah. like you people were able to do things that maybe like 10 years from now or even now you couldn't get away with because everyone was just buying and selling, smashing and grabbing, you know, grabbing and smashing or whatever it is. Um, you know, and so and, and like, how old is this Lewis guy? Uh, he, yeah, he's probably 60s. Yeah, 60. 60s, You're expecting 60s. 60 year olds to understand like how fucking crypto works. It's just he's just like, oh, I like this young whipper snapper, you know? Yeah, I mean, but he's a he's a sharp guy. I mean, you know, he, he's he's like into numbers and like he like i said wrote yeah, moneyball and get, understood yeah, all that he's sharp as they come yeah and it was uh i mean it just really bought it hook line and sinker the sam bankman free thing kind of an apology you know he's an apologist for sam bankman free which is i mean just one of the biggest whiffs in history think about having a book and it comes out kind of praising that guy coming out right before the trial <laughs> what yeah, bad luck i don't think he's gonna sell a lot of them no, I mean, what bad luck. All the, then the, the use, I mean, I still kind of want to listen to it just to hear what he, uh, I'm not, that won't be one I'll read though. I might listen to that casually driving around town. But. Right. I love that. All right. Well, oh, uh, yeah, we've been going for a while, haven't we? Uh, yeah, let's get it. I mean, I, I, I'm, I crushed this episode, by the way. You did, what, man. You did. What are you, what are you looking at this week for these guys, Howie? Um, no way fans are butts. I'm looking at Caterpillar, man. I'm looking at Caterpillar. Caterpillar. Cat's dropping. I think it's dropped a little more. I'll be on it. Uh, if it drops a little bit more, I like Caterpillar right here. Dropping nicely. And then there's about five to seven more that we're about to get on um, over the next uh, couple days because we we're holding a ton of dry power. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Eric, open your mind. From the 
Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim Foyle hack. Tim Foyle hack. It is so hilarious to me.